Habaneros normally when you when you feel it well, you could weigh between 10 grams and 30 grams. The heaviest is 30 grams per fruit. Per, per fruit? Yeah, per fruit. Wow. You could weigh 30 grams. But I don't use an average of 15, I use the lowest of 10. Okay. So say you are having one fruit being 10 grams, mm-hmm. and then you pick 10 from each of the sticks. Mm-hmm. That's 100 grams. So 100 grams times 25,000. <laughs> yeah, that would be 100 grams 25,000. 25, uh, 2,500,000. Exactly. So you divide that by 1,000, that's a kilo. Okay. And you have to sell them? You have to sell a kilo for 30 cities. So 30, no, that's a crazy amount of money. Yeah, so let's say even on each of the acre you get a ton. So that's like 2.5 tons. So 30 cities times 2.5 tons. A ton is 30,000. Two tons is 60,000. Half. That's like 15. So that's like uh, 75,000 Ghana cities a week. That's if you're harvesting a week. If you have you and you're harvesting every week. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another exciting family week in Ghana. This is the first time seeing me. I'm Charles, and on this channel, we talk about agriculture here in Africa. So, yeah, I'm still on Lenny's farm. We've had a conversation with him, we had a farm tour. If you've not checked those videos, you can go and check it out. In this video, I'm going to learn how to grow habaneros. He has spoken several times about how profitable it is, making 5k in a week if you, are, if you make a, a ton and stuff. Looking at the but if you've not checked those ones, you can go and check it. So I know most of you will be interested in how to grow these habaneros. What is even the habaneros pepper he's talking about? Yeah, that's what we're going to look at in this video. We're going to look at how to grow it right from the seedling stage to the point it's transplanted, the farm management practices, whatever you're supposed to know about growing up habaneros. That's what this video is going to be focused on. So before we get into the video, please like this video, subscribe and share. This is um, an easy way to get most of this information for free by visiting these people and I'm giving you this information. Please subscribe to the channel, like this video and share to other people who want to start their own farms if you don't know what to go into. You can try the habaneros out and uh, try it out and also make um, profitable um, gains from it. So right, let's get right into the video. So yeah, yeah I'm here with Lenny. Yeah, I have to look at um, how to grow the habaneros. As you said, it's not something that is most people are into. So it's like something new, maybe Ghana, we are trying to like grow. So this, this video, I want to look at how you can grow habaneros from the nursery, the seedling stage, before you do the transplanting. So yeah, as we are in the greenhouse, can let us know how to go about it right from the beginning. Okay, this is a nursery house actually. This is not a greenhouse. <laughs> okay, the nursery it's house. A nursery house. Okay. So habaneros are spicy, um, aromatic, hot chili peppers they have a scovic hill unit a scovic scovic heat unit of between 100,000 to 500,000 that's how hot they are hot. okay okay and we have other hot peppers Car- carolina reapers and all of the ghost peppers ghost mm. peppers are habaneros okay we are very hot but the ones we grow here are luleza um Mawenzili. Those are the different varieties of the Those habaneros. Are the different varieties of habaneros. Okay. Mawenzili and uh, uh, I think that's that. Those two. Okay. They come in various colors. Yellow, red, orange, pink. Depending on the variety you use. Yeah, depending on the variety you use. Okay. So on, on this farm we have just the yellows and then the reds. Mm. Now for you to have a successful habanero farm, your nursery is of utmost importance you you need to have a very great nursery to to seedling to be able to have a good produce okay now a lot of people would rather have you nest seeds on the floor so they they, they do something like raised beds and some nest. use sunken beds but depending on where they are okay. to raise beds to nest that is also an option but to look at how much you are paying for a seed and then to gamble it on the floor is not very advisable. How, how, how much does a seed cost? Uh, I think 100 pieces now is like 50 cities. Okay. It used to be 35, but now it's 50 cities. Everything is going up. Yeah, yeah. CD, because of CD depreciation. Yeah, everything is going up. So to, to be able to have a good energy, you need a nursery shed. 
You don't necessarily have to build a nursery house like, like this. This progression, this is growth. You start in bits. Eddie had grow lights. Okay. In his house, in his bedroom, <laughs> to nurse purpose, and I think they did very, very well. With that, looking at his farm, it was nice. Okay. So you can have a nursery cage, a normal cage, a small cage where you could keep seed trays. So these are seed trays, and then these things are pot and mix, cocoa pits. Cocoa pits, okay. Largely um, coconut husk and orange fiber. We are made to understand. That's what they use for cocoa pits. Okay, but if you are, so one thing, if you are less, uh, doing the nursery, can you use a normal soil? You can, nurse? but it's not advisable. Um, somebody tried it and it didn't go well. Okay. The reason is that you don't know the fungi or the bacteria no, in the soil. You've not treated it. So you put the seed inside and it doesn't germinate. You get angry. The seeds are not good, but you didn't do it well. So it's advisable to use the cocoa pit. Okay. You put the cocoa pit in the tree. But before you even put them in the tree, sometimes they come dry. So at least make it moist. No watch. Before you apply. No watch. Make it moist. You make it moist, you put it inside it, you fill the seed trees with them. Okay. Then you drop a seed per hole. After that, you could just water them. Here, what we do is after we nurse them, after we seed them, we cover all the seed trees with the black polythene you, you could see on the floor. Okay. We cover them with black polythene. It's believed that it's it keeps it moist and then the peppers, the seeds shoots out early. Again, it's dependent on where you are. In the water region, I didn't use rubbers, I use rags. So oh, okay. I could still water the peppers from the top of the rag and it still goes in. Sure, sure. It, sure. it worked. Because here is hot. Here is hot. <laughs> so if you use black rubber in a hot place, you would understand what you are doing. So you would clearly see why these ones have not even come out yet. They will come, but it's the same thing that happened to this one. They will all come back. It will take it time. Generally, what, 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 how long does it take for you to germinate? Three to four days, you should see your pepper sprouts now. Mm. So, in the in the third week after it germinates, after it's it's out, what you do is that you put them outside for um to 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 uh, to harden them. It's called the hardening period. Okay. So. The seeds were not breeded in Ghana. There are seeds breeded in the so they are not used to our conditions. So they are not used to our conditions. So you need to get them used to our conditions. So here the advantage is that the the heat is actually getting them used to their conditions. So I can send them directly <laughs> and nothing happens to them. But in places like Axim where it's cold or in the Volta region where it's also cold, okay, you would have to harden them. So you put them in the sun timely. That's the seeds or like the the seedlings. The seedlings. Okay. That's when they are in their third week. Mm. Of gem um, of of germination, so you put them there. You you time them like the first week. You go, the first day it goes maybe thirty minutes, so that the sun they, they get used to the sun. The second day it goes maybe an hour. Then subsequently it could go a whole day. Then it gets used to the weather. Yeah. Then in the fourth week you can transplant them. Now in in the nursery process, you could either use. 1919 mpk 1919 okay. so that you could have very thick stems it's very important to have very thick stems sure sure and how long do you have to nest them for before you four do the weeks. transplanting four, four weeks, weeks. so a, a month okay how, how you, you could go three weeks and just just like three weeks old oh so they'll be transplanted very soon yeah until yeah. the new field right yes yes okay. once the place is merged it will be transplanted so okay. after you 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 nest them four weeks and then you could you could get them transplanted mm, okay okay so with the transplant you mulch before you transplant yeah we mulch before you transplant so i thought we, you transplant when they are coming before you mulch no 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 no. we mulch before you transplant we mulch have holes just get holes in the mulch okay. then you transplant mm, okay okay that's fine that's fine i'm looking at the this nursery house um, how much do you say it's cost to put up something like this? Thank you. <laughs> how is it, this guy? <laughs> Talking about money, I have this look. Okay. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Thank sure. You. And like this, wow. this, this, this one, you could get one for the entire place, but it's okay. You can just rip them apart. This one is like five hundred and a series or 
But so what was the name for this? It, it's a shade net. Shade net. Okay. It's a shade net. It's a solar rig. Hmm. And then this is an insect net. So you need all these things to at least be able to get like a good energy. Yeah. You can use mosquito nets. You can use the door nets, but longevity they will not assure you of that. Okay. Given our weather changes, the heat and then water will get on. Even greenhouses get on over time. So imagine wow. if you use even the trap doors in your house, they get on under a year. Okay. So you can imagine if you use that for such a thing. So if you if you buy this, this lasts you maybe five, six years before you do another one. Okay. So for, for a beginner like maybe me, where I'm starting, how if I want to do my own energy, what will you advise for, for other options that I can use that would be less expensive to start? You see, for a beginner like you, I would advise that you go to Holland Green Tech Ghana for them to nest for you your first couple of seeds. Okay. So they do the nursery too? Yes, they do nursery. Okay. I may do nursery for sale, maybe. If I if I get if I need money, <laughs> I will do nursery for sale. But People. Holland Green Tech does. But for anyone who wants to do a farm, I would, I would advise that you actually have your own nursery house or your own nursery kitchen. Okay. In that you are, you, are, you are learning. Farming is a learning curve. It's a, it's a learning process. Okay. You make all the mistakes. If you know you want to grow peppers for a first timer, uh, three months is, is an okay learning period for us. Three months. Yeah. So you could have um, a small nursery shed, maybe a 10 feet nursery shed mm. that could carry maybe 20 or 10 nursery crates. You grow it on a very small piece of land to experience it. Mm -hmm. Then you can go bigger. If you go big and you lose, how would you go again? Always advise, if you are starting something, just start small, start learn. Small because there will be mistakes, learn. definitely be mistakes that you do. As time goes on, you get the experience. You if you think you can afford an agronomist, great, an agronomist. you can go 100 acres and employ an agronomist. To be on the farm. To, to be, be on the it. farm for you. You pay him well, at least. 6k a month is not bad for an agronomist. <laughs> 6k, wow. Okay. Uh, it's like the agronomist is a crop doctor. To be Just like it. your medical doctors. If they don't pay them well, sorry for them. But in the farm, we expect that everybody is paid well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Especially definitely. our agronomists. Once they are doing their job right, make exactly. sure that you pay them to motivate them to do it well for you. Yeah. Because as I said, it's very profitable. And once you do, you get them to grow well. And stuff you sell you make your money too mm. everyone it's a win-win for everyone you don't even feel the pain i get you mm. i get you but for a beginner they can't pay skin are you how are you even starting with your own farm and so for a beginner you have to be smart you have to be friend your agronomist and make him a brother like kofi <laughs> like what you did and so you don't pay him sure but sure. you pay but no now as time goes on he yeah, understands. Yeah, definitely definitely yeah. definitely okay so is that what with the energy is that we can know how from here we, are, we go to the Hey, you can that's that's basically with it you can use 1919 like i said to water it but that's not every day that's maybe every other day so you water today with normal water so normally that's what we do in the farm we we apply fertilizers we don't apply consecutive fertilizers we don't apply fertilizer today tomorrow no okay we can apply fertilizer today it will take us a week to apply fertilizer Again. and all those times we are applying just water so the water washes away the fertilizer residues that we don't need. Okay. So it's the same thing with the the, the nursery. You apply your 1919, the next day you use normal water to water it so that it washes the one that it's not used down. Some people use 1919, others use MAP. I use both. To do it. And crops, for instance, when you see a crop, the color of the leaf will tell you what's wrong with it. The color of the leaf will tell you what it needs. This one is dehydrated, it's water. You would see the size of the leaf and it will tell you, oh, you need calcium nitrate, you need the nitrate. It's, it's deficient in potassium. So with all those things come with time, we experience, experience them. Me, I see my crops and I know, oh, this is wrong with it. You tell me what is wrong with your crops. There are certain things farmers do that we, I don't like. like and the agronomists also say they don't like it. <laughs> they take a picture and send it to you. Ah, Please yes. don't do that. Okay. Don't okay. take a picture and send it to me and don't say anything. I don't know what is wrong with it. Oh, this is my capsicum. This is my green pepper plant. The leaves are curly. It's shiny at the back. It's dying. There is a black, there's a white, white things when I put. 
Then I'll tell you, oh, okay, nematodes are in, oh, uh, trips, oh, water. Then I can tell you what is wrong so with you. You have to give specifics. You should give me specifics. If without that, I can't help. Okay, okay, sure. So I think from here we can go to the the main field, right? Yes, of course, man. Okay, all right, sure. So yeah, catch us to go along in the video. Okay, so we are here on the on the main field, right? Um, we looked at the measure how you nurse. After four weeks, you do the transplanting. Yeah. And also made mention that you mulch before you transplant. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sure. So yeah, when when you are here, what are the things you're supposed to do before, or possibly after mulching before you do the transplanting? Do you do any other what farm management practices would you say is needed to be done here on the main field? Okay. So normally. You would have to. You would have to use um. What's the name? Um, cow dung. We use cow dung here. You can use pottery manure, but we use cow dung. So in using the cow dung, you mix it with neem cake, just to reduce the to fight the fungi infestation of bacteria in the soil. In the not not only the soil but the cattle dung okay. in the soil. Okay. Okay. So like normal farm um, farmland preparation. Plow, you harrow, you root up, you form big beds. Nice. Then you have your irrigation done with your sub mains and then drip lines connected. Okay. You bring okay. the peppers, then you mulch. Of course, so this are the, this is the plastic mulch. mulch. It's mulched. So you mulch, you, you bore the holes inside the, the mulch. The mulch. Some beds. People use their hands. Some others have some sharp objects they use so you will find some of the holes being very circular some of them just being anyhow okay. we got tired we tore it <laughs> <laughs> we got tired and tore it sure okay so you mulch then you get your peppers transplanted nice we nice. don't nice. actually have a particular time to transplant but kofi prefers to transplant at 2 p.m 2 p.m the sun had been hot whatever bacteria is in the ground it's okay. killed it okay okay but before he even transplants, he allows water on the bed for almost two, three hours to get the land wet. Okay. So even if he plants are two, nothing happens. Not, no shock. Nothing. Nice, 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 nice. So you transplant them and you begin to water at once. So the first week, you keep giving it water, water, water. After the first week, that's when you start to apply whatever fertilizer you want. To use. to use normally the fertilizers we use on the farm is map mono ammonium phosphate magnesium sulfate um calcium nitrate so these ones are used when we are on the land yes but when you are the the 1990 yeah 1990 map very small even the 1990 like a teaspoon in okay. one in a teaspoon in is it a teaspoon less than a teaspoon inside um, a washing can okay just to balance it small something so here is where you apply your fertilizers and the fertilizer is now apply, applied manually we do fertigation we put the fertilizers inside the poly tank then we allow it to drip down trickle down just using like gravity it. just like we are watching okay. so the watching here is not done manually it's not sprinkled it's not manual it drips in, in bits in dots inside so actually, it. yes inside so you actually get the place wet so the drip lines are such that the water can wet the whole length of the drip line so even if the pepper is not on the drip line and it gets enough water it will, it will still grow okay. it will get enough water to grow okay. so we that's basically how it is so the habaneros how long does it um does it take for it to reach a maturity that you say from nursery fruit in, yes from, from nursery. four months so a month in the nursery, three months on the field. Then it begins to fruit. Begins to and how long can you fruit to the point where you see, okay, this, this stem take, is... Take this. very good care of it. It could go over a year. Over a year. It should be fruiting over a year. Yeah. But obviously, the quality of the fruit should reduce the... Yes, the quality. Nice, 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 nice. So how many... Um, two and almost a hectare, right? Almost a hectare. So after they've grown to a point, so you say, how, how old are these ones? So these ones are like a month. Oh, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we have like three more months to uh, like two more months. Two more months. Okay, for the meantime. But if you if you take a, a very critical look at some of the sticks, you'd have you'd see peppers growing on them. Yeah, some of them have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah some of them have peppers on them already. So those that at least. So when them. when we grow them in the in the third week into the fourth week, you'd realize they have a lot of other branches. The idea is. A lot of people disagree with me. Selassie doesn't agree with me. What's that? Selassie are, are thinks that I should leave the branches to grow because more branches, more, more flowers, fruits, yeah. more fruits. Yeah. But then again, you are looking at longevity. Okay. If so you prune them? You prune them. And just leave these two to, to do whatever they do because they keep growing and they keep dividing, keep dividing. Mm. So you realize that this one divided into two, this one has already had so, so, yeah. so it it keeps it keeps going. With that, it gives you longevity. If you are applying fertilizer, it shouldn't come here. It should go straight to these people. For they it. should just get the food at the top. You don't need them at the sides. So you prune them. We have something we call pruning shears. Okay. So we we use it to cut. It's so like a scissors. It's just like a scissors. We use them to cut the sides of the peppers, just to allow them. So we've. Here used to be very crowded, like very bushy, but we pruned them last week into this week. And they look neat. So they, they are even, the leaves are becoming more broad, so you you think we've not even done pruning. Pruning has actually taken place. Okay. Okay. So for someone watching us, the mulching, um, he might not know the purpose or the reason why you've mulched this. Maybe you can just do transplanting and you're okay. Mm. So why do you, why is the need for the mulching to be done? So you would realize that I'm picking out grass from a place that there was not a mulch or the mulch got torn. Okay. If there was no mulch, it would be the grass would grow just like this. Which would mean okay. which would mean you controlling the grass time in, time out. And that's expensive, not only financially but time. Time consuming as well. Because you are looking at doing other things on the farm, but you keep who in your farm every day you'd have a work to do in the farm meanwhile there's already work to do on the farm every day and you want to add more so with this one it prevents the grass from growing it also keeps moisture in, in, the, in the soil for the for the plants okay okay so as compared to you living on a bed and no mulching this is better this is better yes, very, very. okay now, how many times do you um water the the crops during hammer time we do twice a week Twice a day, during Amata. Twice a day. During but if it's normal days, just once. Okay. When it rains, at least also. When it rains, you don't, you don't, water, you don't, you don't. It gets to a point you don't even water them for maybe a couple of days, maybe a day, two or three. These ones, we starve them for like three days before we started to water them again. So, so, it, so is it that like, this one? They don't need much water, or they need much water. Vegetables, vegetables generally like a balance. Okay. Just like tomatoes. When there is too much water, the tomatoes plant will wither. When you give it too little water, it will still die. So you need to find a balance. It's the same thing with peppers. You just have to find a balance. The same thing with ginger. You need to find a balance. Okay. 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 So after you've gone to this point in time, hmm. no matter when you come to the farm, let's take us through a day on the farm when you come. What are the things that you do? Normal day on the farm, early in the morning. You get water into your poly tank. If you are going to apply fertilizer, you apply fertilizer through the poly tank. Okay, that's if the fertigation, right? Yeah, fertigation. If you are going to spray insecticides or fungicides, normally on the farm we do preventive. Preventive such that we don't wait till the insects come at us okay. before we spray them. Maybe once a week we apply our insecticides. Once a week we apply fungicides. Just so we don't get them to to attack. Okay. If if a disease catches you before you try to cure, it's very difficult. Prevention is very better than But cure. you prevent it. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So on a normal day, we water. Then it is the responsibility of you, the farmer. That is the joy in the in the farm. Okay. To have a time with your crops, you have conversation with them. <laughs> All you do is you come down. Sometimes you look at. The back of your leaves or oh, maybe insects you pick grasses that grow around them like like this you, okay you take them away you take them away that's a normal day so whilst you are watching if your farm is not too big for you alone <laughs> you can check on yeah, every all the single crops. one of the peppers 
on my first time, I think we have eight, we had 8,000 seedlings. There was a friend of mine called Bright. He looks at every single one of the papers every day if we go to farm. Wow. He had the time. Wow. I've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, let me ask this very important question because some viewers might be watching this video for the first time. They've not checked out the other videos. Mm. Let's look at the profit potential of this. Now, say this farm is sitting on a two and a half acres. Yes. So almost like a hectare. Yes. And how many plants of the um, habaneros do we have on this farm? Yeah, if you I can mean, give an estimate. 25,000. 25,000. Wow. Wow. Okay. What, which, which, oh, what's planted distance was used? I think uh, 30 centimeters. 30 centimeters yeah. between each crop. Yeah. Okay. And if you have to harvest, how many bags? Do you weigh them? Normally in bags, right? Yes. Habaneros, normally when you when you feel it well, you could weigh between 10 grams and 30 grams. The heaviest is 30 grams per fruit. Per, per fruit? Yeah, per fruit. Wow. It could weigh 30 grams. But I don't use an average of 15. I use the lowest of 10. Okay. So say you are having one fruit being 10 grams, and then you pick 10 from each of the sticks. Mm -hmm. That's 100 grams. So 100 grams times 25,000. <laughs> yeah, that would be 100 grams times 25,000. 25, uh, 2,500,000. Exactly. So you divide that by 1,000. That's a kilo. Okay. And you have to sell them? You have to sell a kilo for 30 cities. So 30,000. That's a crazy amount of money. Yeah, 30, so let's say even on each of the acre, you get a ton. So that's like 2.5 tons. So 30 cities times 2.5 tons. A ton is 30,000, two tons is 60,000, half, that's like 15, so that's like uh, 75,000 Ghana cities a week. That's if you're harvesting a week? If you are, you, and you're harvesting every week. So every, every week you do the harvesting, you harvest almost every time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once it begins, once it gets to the harvesting stage, every week you harvest. One ton, one ton, one ton, till it starts to, so it doesn't even start from a ton, it starts from maybe, 10 kilos, 20 kilos, then it picks to a ton. And then, like he says, it could go up more than a ton, but we basically we put it at a ton so that we pick. So that ton means you're picking only 10 fruits a week. A week. Mm. You can count the number of flowers on each plant already. That's more than 10. So if it picks when it goes big and it picks, you can imagine the, num the amount of fruits. It I could even it could even be sitting on 300 fruits. So you are picking 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. Wow. You leave the rest there and come every week. Just pick 10 and go. So that's like a 75k a week on two and a half weeks. Nice. Nice. That's if you have your constant market supply. That's what are you supply to? Exactly. So if you spent uh, 125k, you have made your money back. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But sure. that is if you are selling 30 cities a kilo. I won't sell 30 cities a kilo. Is a, we sell it more than that? No, cheaper than cheaper that. Than I want that. you to be able to eat. So if I sell it 30 cities, how much would they sell it to you to eat? So I'll it sell it cheaper sense. than that. Okay, but I really mentioned that mostly, most people are not growing the habanero, so like, most produce are just a few. Mm, so it means yes, yeah. the pricing is quite good from those who buy it. That's right? what we are trying to discourage. We don't want it to look, make it look like because a lot of people are not growing it, that's why the prices are high. We are costing it because of the stress in the work. Okay. That is the thing. It's the stress and the amount we employ. Because sometimes you could even say a 50K will do your farm. You have neglected basic ones like... He's going to buy water and he's, they brought food to the farm. You've not put all those things into sure. context. All this could go up. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I want to know, for new beginners watching us, who want to start their own heaven and farms, like are you have here, what are some do's and don'ts that they should take note of before they start their heaven and farm? We'll always have um, soil testing done always attend seminars on habaneros watch a lot of youtube videos youtube is a whole university on its own yeah, yeah. you don't get certification for it but you learn a host of things people don't
want to get to learn in their everyday lives. Yeah. Um, make sure you get the guidance of an agronomist. Visit as much habanero farms you can visit. And don't be scared to fail. Fail is part of the process. Don't be scared to fail. You won't fail. You have an agronomy, you won't fail. But just don't be scared to fail. Okay. Okay. All right. So I think um, this will end out the video here. I think it's spoken extensively about Habanero's farm from the nursery to this point. If there's any other question you want to ask, um, you can drop it in the comment section. I would reach out to him to let him answer. It will be the comment section to answer. His contact and the every details will be in the description side. Um, you can reach out to him. I hope you'll be willing to answer. Maybe those who have questions to ask, those who want to reach out to you for anything that you need. Of course, why? Not? Okay, okay, sure. So yeah, that ends this video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. Share this video to other people to get to learn more about Habanero's farm and see the exciting things people are doing here in Ghana. So yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one.